Hello, my name is Michelle Munger, and I am the Associate Director for the Faith Inclusion Network of Hampton Roads, and I'm so glad you've decided to join me for this presentation I'm calling Trying to Get My Family to Church. It's a presentation intended for caregivers, parents, and grandparents, and anyone who's really found a struggle to get their family included in their faith community. A little bit about myself. I am the parent of two autistic young men. They are 20 and 22 years old now with very high support needs. And when they were younger, we were an active duty military family. So we were moving around every three years. So for you parents who have been through IEP meetings, you know a little bit about the challenges um, of doing that. Um, I have served in positions of education director, children and preschool director, as well as even youth director at various locations between the military chapel and civilian-based churches. And it actually took me quite a few years to reconcile my experiences of being a faith leader with the experiences I was having as a mom as a mom with two autistic children who brought their own unique challenges to the mix on Sunday morning. And because of those experiences, I did finally write a book that um, I published last year in 2019. Yeah, well, the year 2020 doesn't really count, right? So 2019, last year, um, I wrote and published this book called Margins of Grace being champions of faith and family in the midst of disability. I've called it the caregiver edition. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit about what's in this book, but I'm not gonna be able to cover it off. So there will be an opportunity for you to get that at a discounted rate um, with, the, with a conference code if you're interested. And we'll have that information for you later. So, let me share with you what I have realized are three reasons why you are struggling with finding a welcoming faith community. And I'm gonna expound on each of these. One, your challenges are off their radar. Think about all of the things that a ministry leader might need to do in the course of their day amongst their responsibilities, both at church or with their family and your challenges just simply are not on their radar. Number two, the faith leader is likely convinced that the solutions that it would require to support the family are beyond their reach. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And the third reason is that they simply do not have the tools in order to be able to meet those needs. So two and three are pretty related, closely related, but they are two distinct things. All right, so reason number one, your challenges are off their radar. My husband, when he was served in active duty military, he actually sat um, in the operations center and he would look at a radar. So um, I know a little bit about how radars function. And if you think about a, when a boat is traveling, they have a radar that's looking out and the radar will, as they're moving, it picks up the blips as the vehicle is moving so that they know where other ships are, they know where other land masses are. So it just helps, it's another set of eyes. If you think about our responsibilities as individuals, we all have radars that helps us recognize when we need to pay attention to something. I know for myself, I did not realize that the disability community had the kinds of challenges that it does within the faith community. I served within church capacities for many years before getting married and before having children and before experiencing the challenges that I have experienced. And I never experienced someone coming to me and saying, you know what, we are real, this church is really not helping my family much. We really need to do something different. So when 
my boys were diagnosed and when we were having the kinds of challenges that we were, it was an opportunity for me to see that there's this whole different world out there that I didn't even know, right? You know, if you think about a horse and the blinders that they have on, they can't see what's left and right to distract them. It almost felt like a degree of blinders had come down by my personal experience now with disability. And because of this, when we think about the radar and its needs to maintain its good communication, it's likely that that software needs to be upgraded once in a while, especially if we think about how our mapping programs, you know, the old Garmin, you needed to update it once in a while so that it would get the new information of when a new road was built or when that road was cut off and is no longer usable so that you don't start down a path and discover, oh, that road closed five years ago. You need to turn around and find a different route. I like to think of this as to a degree that it is up to us to help upgrade the radar software for our ministry leaders. And that's going to take some time and effort, but especially it's going to take grace. And all of this conversation, I hope you will see that we need lots of grace in order to communicate well with our ministry leaders. All right, your challenges are off the radar. We need to take time to have a conversation with the ministry leaders, with the volunteers, with those people who are going to be interacting with our family on a regular basis. So we need to help update their radar. So the idea is that when we help upgrade that soft, that radar software, we'll be able to move forward to address the other two issues. So there are some concrete steps that you are going to have to take in order to be able to do that and to be able to have this conversation with your faith community and do it with grace. All right, so step number one, is that you must know what you need from your faith community. It is so important that when someone asks you, when they're ready to dive in and to do whatever it takes to welcome you and your family, they're going to ask you, what do you need from us? And your answer cannot be, I don't know. Because then that we're at a dead stop. We're, we can't move forward. There's no way to create a plan. There's no way to get beyond just standing there looking at each other, eyes blinking, blank faces. That's not what we want. You must know what you need. I can tell you that when I first encountered this issue, I realized that the most basic need that I had from my faith community was to be able to sit in the worship service with my husband next to me for just that solid hour. That was what I needed. I didn't need a respite night. I didn't need a special classroom. I didn't need any of that. What I needed was to be able to sit in worship. One of the things that we assume is that our needs are the same as everyone else's needs when it comes to being included in a faith community. And actually, you might want to consider that that's not actually true. There are many, many different reasons why a person or a family decides to attend church on Sunday morning. Some of them are, some of the reasons are not so good reasons. Other reasons are pure reasons, but everyone has different reasons for why they come. It might be out of habit. It might be out of guilt. It might be because they need that respite time, that quiet time to sit with their family and sit praising God in worship. But everyone has different reasons. So you need to know what your reason is. That way you can help communicate. And once you know what that reason is, then you have to tell somebody. We are not mind readers. We, no one's figured out that technology yet. And they're not going to see it in your eyes. 
actually the only thing they're probably going to see in our eyes is exhaustion. Because I know when I was a young parent, I was exhausted a lot of the time. That they certainly could see in my eyes. But we need to know what we need and we need to be able to communicate that. So what you need to do is you can't have this conversation on Sunday morning, 10 minutes before the worship service starts. This is a conversation that should happen where you call the church office during the week. Best time to call, in my opinion, is Tuesday afternoon about 1 o'clock. Call the office Tuesday at 1 o'clock and find out from the person who answers phone, from the church administrator, who is the best person to have a conversation with concerning the unique needs of my family. If you're in a small enough church, a small to medium-sized church, the senior pastor, he might be it. He or she might be it. So there might only be one staff person to speak with. And if that's the case, then you've got to get on their calendar, schedule a time, make sure you have a full one hour time block so there aren't any distractions. When you have that meeting, you get to bring this conversation in a calm, clear voice, simply sharing the challenges and the struggles. But really, you need to communicate. This is number three. You need to communicate that you want to be a team player in helping the, your faith community include your family well. And by that, I mean, be ready to say, I will sit with my child during children's church for a couple of weeks so that you can see how what he can do, so that you can see how she can interact with her world. If both mom and dad are able to participate, maybe you switch off so that your child doesn't get so used to one parent being there. And then maybe as the weeks go by, you start ducking out of that time 10 minutes early, 10, 15 minutes early. Start weaning your child from you being there on Sunday morning or whatever time of the day, whatever function it is. So eventually you have shown all of the folks that are working with those children with that age group, you have shown them what your child can do. You have shown them how to interact with your child. And now they have the tools, they have the information they need in order to support your child well. So that you can go serve elsewhere or fully participate during that worship hour. So one of the things you also need to know is uh, about being a team player is that when you go in there and say to the ministry leader, we need a special needs ministry, what that ministry leader actually heard was very different. When you said those words, they, what they heard was, we need more volunteers, and we already are lacking volunteers. We already don't have enough for what we're already doing. They heard, we need a building renovation capital fundraising campaign because we probably need to do some renovations. Or they heard, we need to schedule more training opportunities and the schedule is already super tight. And they probably even heard, we need to find more space. We need to move things around. Once upon a time, I would have said, those are not my problem. If that's what you think needs to happen, then, then you go ahead. But the ultimate thing is that my family needs to be included. When we approach this conversation with grace, then you have got to enter into a not necessarily compromise situation, but you need to help figure out what are the baby steps that are needed in order to help this ministry, ministry leader understand that they can do this and that you're going to help them with every resource that you know of. And then that final issue is helping them to find tools. For as much as we have some amazing books that have been written recently about special needs ministry, 
most of those books feel very overwhelming for those people that don't have huge mega churches and huge mega budgets in order to come alongside those needs. So often a ministry leader will look at a book, how to, ha- how to set up your special needs ministry, and they see all of the things that need to happen. And unfortunately they say, we don't have the people, we don't have the budget, we don't have the space. I can't do this, and they set the book aside. So it's not until a parent comes by who says, we can do this, and this is all that we need to do to get started. That is what needs to happen. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. Our creator has made each faith community distinct and unique. The people that are in your faith community that you're trying to connect with are very different than the people down the road. And because of that, each community has all of the gifts and all of the skills that they need in order to do this well, but it's going to look different from community to community. It will take some time and effort to figure out what does my community need to do. These ideas might be great, but they may not apply, or they might be inspiration for another way of doing it and still being successful to include families. There are actually quite a few websites and organizations out there that are doing some great work, and I'm going to give you just a few websites. There are so many more, um, but If you go to any of these, they're also going to be able to share other resources with you. So if you need more resources to share with your ministry leader, I would suggest the Faith Inclusion Network website. That's faithinclusionnetwork.org. That also, there's a YouTube channel. So much like this conference, there are recordings from prior conferences there. There is a website, the allbelong.com group. They have some amazing materials and lots of wonderful resources there. Key Ministry is also an amazing organization that actually has a lot more um, information if you need it about mental illness. So many of the other groups have a lot about disabilities in general. If you need resources on mental illness, Key Ministry is a great first stop. And also SOAR Ministry, S-O-A-R, they also have some great stuff. And there's also Inclusion Innovations. There's some great things there. And I know that the Faith Inclusion Network and the Inclusion Innovations Network are currently going under some facelifts. So definitely check back with those in the March, April, 2021 timeframe. So just to wrap all of this up, yes, there are definitely challenges out there that we are facing as caregivers of people with disabilities. There are challenges that I know I have felt should not be. We should not be dealing with these challenges. But unfortunately, we live in a fallen world, and it is just what we have to do. It's getting better. The world that we live in today, the awareness and the inclusion and the acceptance of people with disabilities is far greater than it was even 20 years ago. And it's just going to get better. And it's going to get better with your help. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And again, if you're interested in the book that I wrote, it's called Margins of Grace. It is available on Amazon, but if you would like to, there will be a link on the conference website for you with a discount. So thank you very much and God bless you all.